This is Gabnet, the Greater American Broadcasting Broadcast Network. Network. Now, now in its eighth year of talk, but like you've never, never heard it before. before. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown is a comedian who resides in San Francisco, California, my hometown, where I go to visit him every couple of weeks, and we knock off a couple of these interviews, and hello, Larry. Hello, Alex. Now, Welcome out here live sometime. Yeah, you, you were saying, you were saying the last time that, and it, it would be the same now because we record two of these at a time, that it's a cold day in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, what, what what was the old line that somebody had about the co- uh, the uh, the coldest time I ever spent in San Francisco? Coldest, 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 uh, coldest winter I ever spent was a summer in San Francisco. That was a, that's the line. Yeah, who that was, was Mark that? Twain? Was that Mark Twain? Yes. Son of a. And uh, there's a my friend Louis Katz, a comic who now lives in New York, had a. He said, the hottest woman I ever fucked was a man in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, well, I'll tell you, it, 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 uh, um, what I always loved about San Francisco is I called it the world's only air-conditioned city. You know, you could have yeah. a uh, hot day everywhere else. In San Francisco, there'd be a cold, cool breeze coming through because there was a fog lying off the coast. You know. Right, you can, you can, it can, and these tourists come out here. They think it's California as a whole, the same, like you know, palm trees and everything. They come out here and they're just their shorts and they just see them shivering. Well, actually, you know, San, San Francisco was known in the early days for show business, for movies and so on, as the playground for Hollywood. They would come up to San Francisco. It was the thing to do: come to San Francisco and hang out because they love the city. You know. And it's a great yeah. city. It's one of the great cities. Um, but, uh, and it's very cold, and then in September and October is when we get the hot weather. Yes, September and October. I'll and never forget, uh, October 4th, 87, you did a show at the Frost Amphitheater at Stanford, and it was uh, 104 degrees. It was 104 degrees, and what I remember distinctly was we had 9,000 people sitting on the lawn out there. And the, Unbelievable. Thing, and the thing is lined with trees. So when the sun would move, the shadow from the trees would shift across. And I could literally see a pattern of the trees in the people that were sitting on the lawn trying to get some kind of shade. But we were we wound up passing out water, I think, to people and spraying. I, and they water. were they were spritzing water on people too. Yeah, it was, it was really just broiling. Yeah. But people were laughing. And the, yeah, like you said, 9,000 people. That was the height of the boom. Yeah, that was my biggest, uh, that was my biggest show ever. Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, what we, what I was so proud of was that for, I guess, five, six, seven, eight years, something like that, we did one show after another every, about every three months at some place that maybe held, I and mean, we'd do two shows a night. And um, we, never had anything less than a sellout you know we would usually mm-hmm. sell out within a day okay uh, uh, and that was the culmination of it we said okay let's do the frost amphitheater let's see if we can fill that place and we filled it 9,000 people yeah, yeah I remember the uh, Chronicle the next day wrote this this surely has to be the peak of the comedy boom and I think they were right did they say that I didn't know yeah that. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. All right. You know, I mean, I remember it because um, it turns out that um, my business manager hadn't been handling my taxes that well <laughs> for the company. And uh, it, it had forgotten to pay certain taxes that we should have been paying. Uh, and it's not to his 
dismay. I mean, he just in those days he wasn't as as, as good a business manager as he is now, um, for a variety of reasons. But anyway, uh, we owed something like twenty five thousand dollars in taxes, and that's the worst thing that can happen to you folks is to owe money in taxes. All right. Well, that show paid off my taxes. <laughs> okay. And then some, probably. And, and, and then a little bit more, yeah. But basically, it paid the taxes. So I remember I got out of my tax problem with that show. And uh, then we did another one the next year. I don't think we got 9,000 there, but we got about 5,000 people. That was the Greek theater in Berkeley. No, we didn't. I, I think we did another one in Frost, if I'm not mistaken, didn't we? I don't remember another one in Frost. I remember, I remember we did Mother's Day at Berkeley in 88. Yeah, that, we, that one I remember. Uh, we did. Uh, Who was on that show? Do you remember? Uh, I think the usual suspects. What's her name? Who became a writer for for Seinfeld? Uh, oh, uh, Carol Leifer. Yeah, Carol she, Leifer. Was on, she was on that good good call. That was uh, she was at the Berkeley show. Yeah. Yeah, I remember because I think I had her as one of the headliners. I'm yeah, she was, and she was really nice. Were Were you on that show? Yeah. Yeah. Who else? Do you remember? Uh, Feldman, I think. Uh, Pearl? Yeah. There were people I would always use. And I would always use them, number one, because I like them. Right? And secondly, because they were they were they could be counted on to do a good act. Yeah. You know? Uh, maybe not the funniest act in show business, but good, solid comedy. Uh, and uh, I guess my, my core group was Feldman, you, uh, Ruben. Born. Warren. Warren Thomas, yeah. yeah. Uh, if you did a, we did a great show at the, I love that room, the Stone in Palo Alto. You did a couple of shows there. Yeah, I vaguely remember that, yeah, yeah. So anyway, you know, I mean, uh, the Keystone, the Keystone. Was called. Keystone, yeah. Yeah, not the Stone, Keystone. Uh, yeah, the Keystone shows were, we did those regularly. Those were very good. Uh, but, you know, I mean, um, uh, we had some funny people back then, and I funny people, and you could, like you said, you could you could sell out a show pretty much anywhere back then. Yeah, yeah. So you know, and of course, being on my show helped your worth when you went out. To oh, the club. absolutely, yeah. Yeah. You know. uh, in fact, what I loved about my show was that it entitled comics who I liked to be able to go into a club and go. Well, you know, I do the Alex Bennett program all the time. You got to pay me more. Yeah. You know, you could actually negotiate more money because you were more valuable because you did my show on a regular basis, and that made me feel real good because I felt I was aiding and abetting somebody's income. Yeah, it worked for everyone. It was great. You were talking last time about terrible interviews that we did. Do you remember any any more? Uh. I can't really recall anyone's. Not it, really. It was not pretty hard. Band. It was pretty hard to have a bad bad interview, because I was remember, because I was such a good interviewer. Yeah, I remember you know. Camille Paglia might have not been a bad interview, but she was so freaked out by the live audience, you had to take her into a. Yeah, we had to go. We studio. had to go into another room and do the interview. Yes, I remember that. Uh, she the crowd bothered her, and then once I got her into that studio, she's supposedly a very difficult person. All right. Uh, but I got her in that other studio, and we got along fine. Okay. You know, we didn't uh, we didn't uh, have much trouble with each other. Um, but yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Uh, I, re I remember sometimes people would come in to do the show, and they had no idea you had a live audience. I just their their reaction sometimes were kind of funny when they walked in. Like, well, when we had the small studio in uh, yeah, where uh, where by the way Twitter is now uh, mm -hmm. in the uh, and the bottom floor of the uh, furniture mart. We had a very small studio, but we crushed people in there so we could have a live studio audience, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I had Edward James Olmos came on the show. And he walked into the studio and walked over to everybody who was sitting in that small studio and shook their hand. I'm Jim Olmos. Nice to meet you. I'm Jim. He shook hands with wow. everybody. Brilliant. And I went, what a nice guy. 
Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're yeah. going to love you after that. And he was already a big star. I mean, he'd been on uh, Miami Vice and a couple other things, you know. But uh, I remember him being nice, and I remember the worst person that ever, ever came into my studio was in that studio, that small little studio. Who do you think it was? Do you have any idea? Was it an actor? Yes, absolutely. Who else could be assholes but actors? Go ahead. <laughs> There's so many of them, I couldn't, I couldn't guess. Um, Christopher Reeve. Really? Wow. Yes. yes. He came in and he had some kind of snit about his assistant and something she hadn't done. And he started reaming her out in front of the entire studio audience. Ooh, that's, and that's he not good. was mean. He was mean. And that was the worst human being I've ever had in my studio. Yeah. Wow. And he had the. Uh, I think it was Robin, one of Robin Williams' best friends. He was uh, Robin Williams' roommate in college. I don't care if he was Robin Williams' best friend. This guy was a jerk. Class A jerk. I never would have guessed because he had such a nice reputation, or you would at least a seemingly, seemingly nice reputation. And when he fell off that horse and became paralyzed, basically in my own mind I was thinking, man, he got what he deserved. <laughs> wow. That's a really, I've never seen anybody treat another human being who worked for him so badly in my life. And this I just in, in front of the audience. In front of the audience, yeah, they were so all. They were horrified. They, they were horrified. Uh, it was not right of him, you know. It was terrible. It was just terrible. I, I, I was, I was aghast at what he had pulled off there. And when he left, I mean, everybody was coming up to me, going, "Wow, what was with that guy?" You know. Uh, Jeez. You know, and I, and I thought to myself, you know, he's not that good an actor. You know, <laughs> you can get snotty like that if you're a terrible act, if you're a good actor. But when you're a mediocre actor, please don't try that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyway, so that that was uh, that was that was the worst person that I ever had in the studio. There but, must have been more. Uh, I uh, you know something I got to tell you for the most part I I usually never had problems with interviews. You know, I said earlier, and it sounded like I might have been bragging, that, you know, I, you never, you, you could say, well, what bad interviews did I do? And the fact is that I did very few bad interviews because I was such a good interviewer. And I think the one thing that I have known over the years is my abilities as an interviewer. Uh, uh, you proved that once by, uh, you took, uh, at random, you took a caller, and you said, I'm going to interview the next caller, and... For some, I just remember it was a really good interview. What I did, no, I wanted to prove something that you could interview anybody. Yeah, and, and it worked. And I said, I'm going to take the next caller and I'm going to f interview them, right, as opposed to taking their call. And so I took the next call, and it was, I think it was a guy, it might have been a woman, mm -hmm. I can't remember. It would have to be one or the other. Uh, and, uh, well, not these days, it couldn't be, it could be one of 20 different sexual yeah. identities which I want to get to in a second. Um, but, um, uh, and I just I went and started interviewing this person like I would interview anybody and would start going into their life in intimate detail and finding moments in their life that were actually interesting stories. And at the end of it, I proved that I could interview anybody. You know, uh, and uh, and that was true. I mean, I, I I never bragged about. I never thought I had that great a voice. I never thought I was that great a commercial reader. I never thought I was that great a radio personality. But when it came to interviews, that was my that was my bailiwick. That was the thing I did. I think exquisitely, and take great pride in. Um, and so there was very seldom any such thing as a bad interview with me. You know how I got that interview skill? I'll tell you, it's interesting. I was at uh, WPLJ in New York, and uh, one of the things they made me do was a Sunday morning talk show of interviews with people that they could pass off as public service because you had to do so much public service on your radio station in those days. 
And so they would hand me things like the head of uh, head of the Boy Scout troop, you know. I mean, just uh, people that just seemed to be almost like you couldn't interview them. Mm-hmm. And by will of force, I found a way to interview all these people and make them interesting. And that's when I learned how to interview. Prior to that, I had been a mediocre interviewer. But after that, I learned how to how to just wow. you know how to suss out every inch, every corner of somebody's life and try and make it explode. Okay, so. Well, even the dullest person will usually have an interesting story if you can find well, it. Well, I my I often wanted to do a show that way that everybody has a story and just take like I did that day, just somebody and just say, okay, let me start talking to you, let me start interviewing you, let me start asking you about your life, and I think you would find that most people do have at least somewhere in their lives several good stories. Yeah, for sure. You know, even. Uh, you out there are listening, say, "Well, I don't have any good stories." You know, I, you know. But if I, you and I sat down, I would dig out that good story. Yeah. You know, and that was that was the job of me. That was my job. The job of the interviewer was to answer the questions, but not go, not grunt as Iggy Pop did with me, uh, or belch at the end of it, or. Uh, or, or be as dull as we talked last time as Wally Sean, who, again, <laughs> I want to say a lovely person who I'm still a big fan of. I love him on Young Sheldon. Uh, but I think the world of Wally Sean, but God, was he boring. Oh, well, I amazing. would think actors in general would be kind of a tenuous uh, subjects to interview because no. a lot of them quite aren't, aren't all that bright. <laughs> Well, you know something? I, I don't find that a, a big problem because still they, they, they're there to by their force of personality so they can survive it. I'll tell you who I can't, who I never could stand interviewing. Politicians. The worst, yeah. They, yeah. Uh... And I'll tell you why. Because they have an agenda. And no matter what you do, they're going to go with that agenda. You know? They're going to have those 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 hot those, what are the hot points topic points that they're gonna they're gonna bring up, uh, and they're they're just horrible. I mean, they never will give you a straight answer. No. I've had some that have uh, people I didn't expect would be that way. Um, I love uh, Tom Delay, a guy who I think he wound up in jail. As a matter of fact, I interviewed him and I thought he was terrific. I thought he was just very real. I know that sounds difficult, folks, when I say Tom DeLay, but it, it was true. And another guy I loved interviewing, Pat Buchanan. Because you could always get a straight answer out of Pat Buchanan. But everybody else, it was always, uh, you know, well, you know, you say, you did such and such and such and such. Why did you do that? And then they would go, well, you know, it reminds me of a story. And they, would, they knew how to take any way you wanted to drag them and drag you in the other direction. And that's very difficult when you're sitting there trying to interview somebody. And that's why I always hated politicians, is because they did exactly that. They always had their agenda, and that was it, and so be it. You know? Right. And I don't know that I find that particularly a stimulating time to spend with somebody. Uh, but actors, you know, yeah, some of them are kind of dumb, and some of them are just amazingly, they amaze you. You know, some of the ones that I can't try to remember now who amazed me, but sometimes an actor you didn't think would be a lot of fun to interview turned out to be terrific. Um, I think. Do you remember? I think you didn't. You have Steven Seagal on once. I'm oh, trying to remember oh, how that one went. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I had him on with Dana Gould, and uh, at, uh, <laughs> at at what was it him? Yeah, it, it was him that did this line. He said, uh, he said to him uh, something, uh, there's something went back and forth with he and Steven Seagal, and he said, you're not going to hit me, are you? And Seagal went, the day's still young. <laughs> um, you know, but uh, Seagal wasn't that pleasant, you know. But well, he, he was big, though, at the time. He was big. I could never figure out why Steven Seagal was big. 
Yeah, he uh, he's a little he did well though. And well, he, Dana, Dana Gould, we <laughs> Dana Gould and I were on one morning, and you know who almost who scheduled to be on and almost didn't come on because they heard us coming down in the car was uh, at the time Bruce, it was Bruce Jenner. Was Bruce Jenner on my show? Yeah, and Dana and I were on like an hour before him, and I guess he thought we were so foul he didn't want to be part of it. <laughs> I don't remember having Bruce yeah, Jenner. Yeah, he you know, people, uh, but people, he came in and did the show, but he almost pulled off. You, you know something, I, uh, folks, I, I, I believe it. If Bubbles says it's true. Yeah. Uh, okay. But I never thought, I never, I don't remember having Bruce Jenner on the show. And I don't remember how the interview with him went, but he did show up. I remember that. Wow. And it was you and who else? And Dana? Dana Gold, yeah. 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 Wow. That's amazing. That's amazing. See, people say that to me, you know. Um, like, I, I uh, somebody pointed out one day, oh, you remember the time he had Lisa Kudrow on? And I went, what? I had Lisa Kudrow <laughs> on my show? And they said, yeah, she was with this comedy group. And they all came on. She was part of it, and I went. No, I don't remember. I, um, uh, what's his name? The the comic. Uh, oh God, I might say Lewis Black. I'm interviewing Lewis Black over at Sirius XM, and he says, "You remember me, don't you?" I said, "I'm supposed to." And he said, "Yeah, I did your show in San Francisco years ago." He said, "But you might not remember me. I wasn't shouting back then." You know. <laughs> Uh, he had learned how to do that a few years l after that. He said, no, you did your sh I did your show, and you were very nice to me, and I thank you for that. And I went, jeez, you know, the people I've had on that I don't remember or don't know I had on is, is probably longer than the list of the people I can remember. Because every morning... It would be morning, nice if you could compile a list of everyone you interviewed on the uh, Live 105 years. Well, my producers were like, pile in all these interviews on me. You know, we get this actor, and we get this comedian, we get this musician, and whatever. And uh, every morning, we'd go through maybe four different interviews. And so, I guess, after a period of... Uh, how many years was I at Live 105? Uh, you know... After that many years, I think it was something like eleven. You've got how many people you interviewed, and you're gonna you're gonna forget a lot of them because they just come through. Just like here's another one, here's another one, here's another one, here's another one. Yeah. Well, let's say you do two hundred and fifty shows a year. Yeah, I do and three. If you, if you have four people on a show, that's a thousand a year. <laughs> yeah, and then we got the comics on top of it. Yeah, the comics were always kind of like the they were the the bedrock of the show and they would be in there and then we would bring in the interview and the comedians would still be there you know so uh it, yeah it was so great having everybody in the uh show in the studio sometimes once, huh? sometimes we would have five six comedians all in that studio at the same time and i don't know what it sounded like on the air but i'm sure it was just this wall of sound you know. A little chaotic. There's too many comics. You know. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, and especially if you got somebody like uh, a bunch of riffers on. You if know. you had like uh, Slayton and Warren and Pearl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it was just it was just madness. It was just madness. So, you know, uh, those were rough days for me. But you know, they made for good shows, but they were rough. Yeah. And then we'd all go to breakfast. Good time. Stuffed bagel. Yeah. Stuffed bagel. Yeah, there's a place called the Stuffed Bagel, folks. It was a, it was a, the, yeah, I think Kevin Pollack was a partner in that, wasn't he? I don't know if he was, uh, but uh, we used to have breakfast there every morning for free because we would plug it, and they did a lot of business because of us. And I would uh, invite all the comedians who were on the show in the morning to meet over at the Stuffed Bagel and have breakfast. Yeah. You know? It was a it was a nice time for everybody, I, you know. I, Much uh, better time. Yeah, you know, uh, you know that kind of radio. I could people say, "Well, gee, come back to San Francisco and do that kind of show again," and I go, "Never could do it." You know, even just the atmosphere wouldn't allow me to have a studio audience. 
you know? Yeah. Because they, oh, we can't let all those people into the studio. That, that would cause problems, you know? People could come in with guns and blah, yeah. You just wouldn't they'd do say it. The, they'd say the, uh, the, they, what they always say, oh, we can't. It's li liability issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So That's the answer for everything, liability. Yeah, liability, yeah. Do you remember, uh, I wanted to bring this up. Yeah, you, uh, make it quick because we're running out of time. Go ahead. There was some, a cop had been shot. You said something that you, somebody made a joke. I don't know if it was you, but I remember then a bunch of cops showed up at the station and it got kind of tense for a while. Really? I don't know what we said about cops. I, can't, I, I don't think you made a joke about it. It might have been one of the comics, but a, a couple of them came down to the studio. I don't know if they got kind of like a show of force there like what the fuck going on <laughs> those are the days when the cops asserted themselves yeah anyway <laughs> now they just stand outside a classroom like while kids are being killed anyway <laughs> nice an nice talking to you larry yes let's uh, end on a high note <laughs> <laughs> bye This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, there we go, Larry Bubbles Brown. Thank you, Larry. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll talk to you next week. We always like to talk to Larry every week. So it's a good time for me. It also allows me to spend uh, a half hour that I don't have to do this show. Do I need to, sh do I need to shave? Do I need to? trim this up I don't know I don't care you know what I don't I'm getting to the point where I don't care about stuff anymore uh, latest problem I'm having is my uh, Apple mail is not picking up my gabnet mail okay uh, yeah that's right not picking up my gabnet mail for some reason whenever it's Alex at gabnet.net it just doesn't pick up so uh, it uh, it's a real it's a real problem, uh, and and this has just been in the last I don't know forty eight hours something like that that this has started to happen and now it just doesn't even find it. There is something wrong somewhere. It, it app my iPad picks it up fine, gets all my mail just just perfectly. So I don't understand it. Doesn't make any sense to me. But what the hell? Uh, that that's the way it is and. Uh, you know, but I'm, it's problems like that, and I, I spent all day trying to find the problem, and I've tr done everything, and now I finally determined it's not me, it's not my machine, it's not my, it's something to do with the program and the thing it's trying to pick up, okay, that isn't the same on the, uh, on the iPad. So uh, it's not me, and I, I finally get to the point where I'm going, I don't give a shit whether I get my mail or not, you know? Just, uh, I've had it, <laughs> right? Anyway, by the way, uh, Jack is still out tonight and probably will be, I'd say, for a while, okay? Uh, they've got him in what I call medical hell, which is, let me, let me turn my mic up here. Uh, medical hell, which is, you know, one test after another, trying to figure it out. Oh, my God, we don't know what's wrong with you. You know, we can't, we don't, it may be, they say it may either be his spine or his, uh, uh, his uh, uh, urinary system, or it just could be something else, which was just nothing. And, you know, when they do that, I said, you know, they, they, they treat a human being like he's a machine, you know, like he's a computer. Oh, you, you brought your computer into us because it doesn't work. Okay, well, we'll figure out what's wrong with it. Uh, it isn't this, and it isn't that, and it isn't this. And they treat you like a computer rather than just say, you know, I mean, it's just, it, it goes on forever. And I, I'm glad I haven't gotten myself in that, uh, and I've, I've fought to keep myself out of it, in what I call that medical hell where they get you in this, uh, like a, on a treadmill, uh, one thing after another, one thing after another, one thing after another. And uh, he's going through all kinds of tests. And, they, you know, he fell down three times, another three times, uh, another couple of times. He's fallen down, he said, maybe six times in the last two weeks. But in one day, he fell down three times. 
So because he fell down, they're assuming it's everything else, you know, a lot of other things, and, and it might not be. Who knows? Who knows what it is? But we wish him the best of luck, and, you know, if you know, if you know his number, give him a call, say hello to him, make sure he's okay, make him sure that, you know, he's missed by everybody, which he is, obviously. Or write him an email if you know how to get an email to him. And just uh, pick his spirits up because he's just, you know, he just doesn't, he, he doesn't know what to think, okay? And, and neither do I, and neither do you, and neither does anybody else. So that's, uh, that's what's going on with him. And uh, bravo, uh, uh, Jack. We, we wish you the best, okay? Uh, and in the meantime, uh, we'll just play reruns. In fact, oh, God, i got to put another... Well, I, I'll, I'll run the same rerun I ran last night. Uh, and then I'll figure out something to do to put in his place of old shows of his. But I, over the week, I just haven't had a chance to do it. So we'll do it this weekend. Anyway, uh, let's uh, go get some uh, callers on here. What callers there are. You know, there are a small amount lately when we start off. Oh, geez, what was that? What was that? Ooh. Uh, hey, hi, how are you? Jeff uh, and Josh and uh, Alan, hello. Good uh, hello. Good, uh, hello. good. evening to all of you. Yeah. Okay, what do you want to talk about? Mm -hmm. oh, good question. Oh. Huh? Then what's going on? <laughs> what's going on? I don't oh. know. Are you a veteran who happens to have any form of cancer caused by your service to our government? No, I don't think so. Oh, well, then you'll be fine, so it's good. What do you mean? <laughs> I mean, apparently, you know, we failed to pass a health care bill to, you know, provide health care to veterans that we made sick for like the 350th time, so you'll be fine. We didn't We didn't pass that bill? I wasn't paying attention. Well, some kind of blockage by the Republican Party, I don't know. And, you know, I'm sure they've got some stick up their ass about it, and including... You know, one of the people on that list of people who refuses to block it is, you know, uh, Mitt Romney, who you guys will all be trying to tell me later is, you know, the most sensible Republican there is. And I always just roll my eyes and say, yeah, whatever. He's true to his own colors when the time comes. I don't, for I don't understand don't that. that is, it's not part of the concept I have of him that I would think he would care more about the, the veterans. You know? so I, he's, he is what he is. I mean... You know, I, I, I don't know what their particular objections are. I, they'll have some sort of game they'll try to run, and they'll say it was excuse me, I have to, underhanded. I, and I, I just you know, about, I'm always screwing up, by the way, on this show. Hold on just one, one second here, because I have to go put our Zoom panel on here. I'm talking to these people, and nobody knows who I'm talking to. Okay, there we go. Oh, boy. Anyway, go ahead, as you were saying. Um, I was just, you know, I probably need to read an article or whatever and get get up on what their exact objections are but like i said i'm, I'm sure they'll run around and say it was some sort of underhanded move or the way that the democrats were trying to pass it is uh, dirty or they were trying to attach some some bill to give tax credits to people who own turtles or you know some ridiculous night like like, like you know we were trying to trick them i mean it's it's come on it's a it's a bill to provide health care to veterans who became sick doing a service that you later found out could make them sick. And not only did you not do much about it at the time, but now you won't even take care of them after the fact. You can't hide from it. Just yeah, give well, it what up, gets you know? me? What, I, I, have you seen the stuff John Stewart's been saying? His, his, right. I mean, that's that's yeah. he's 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 on that just like he was for the 9-11 responders stuff that they took, you know, Half the people that needed it were dead by the time they got around to paying for it. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, well, like literally. So, he, I mean. He made a point. He made a point. And his point was somehow you can pass bills to give more money to the military, but you can't pass yeah. money to take care of the people who were in it. Right. You know, yeah. so, I mean, it's hip, hip, yeah, uh, this is This is part of this is part of defense spending. You know, I mean, <laughs> it, it is just part of 
the cost of doing, you know, defense business, if you will. I mean, yeah, I, I, again, I, maybe I can try to find out what their exact particular objections were. I, you know, I've been pretty, pretty busy the last 48 hours, but I just know that, you know, I, uh, there was a list of 25 people I saw put out who were holding it up and, you know, Mitt Romney was on there and, you know, Rob Portman was on there, my senator from Ohio. So I've seen a few things about it locally here. I mean, Rob Portman's even retiring. So I, I don't know whose ass he's trying to kiss or whatever. But uh, like I say, you know, I mean, yeah, but this these is, people, this, this they is, are who they are. They don't change their stripes. And, you know, let me explain to you, this, 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 this is Rob Portman's last chance to be a total asshole. I guess, you know, or maybe a decent human being. But I mean, yeah, again, I, I don't know what 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 the what the deal is. I mean, even if there is something that you don't like about I mean, then just accept it. Then that's the way that it is. I mean, you know, there's plenty of shit people don't like deal with that at, when the time comes. But you have to take care of of people. But look, we, we see this, you know, before. I mean, you know, they'll moan and groan about having to you know, send money when there's a hurricane or something like that. I mean, and it's it's usually the Republican Party that holds that kind of stuff up or whatever. I mean, it's the same shit over and over and over again. So if the people aren't tired of it yet, then let them keep suffering. And, and Yeah, you know, I don't vote. understand why they ask. aren't tired yes. of it. You know, I just don't understand why they aren't tired of it. Uh, uh, by, because, I mean, it's just inhumane. I, I, it would seem to me that if you're a congressman or you're a senator, your job is to do whatever you can to help the public out, you know, whatever their problems seem to be, and that they, they, that comes first. But, you know, these guys, will, tomorrow you want to put a bill for more guns and weapons for the military, and they'll pass the bill immediately. But when they want to send them somewhere where they're going to get diseases or whatever, if they come back with them, well, you're on your own, pal. Oh, by the way, thank you for your service. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, I I don't have uh, problems with, you know, uh, things of philosophy, you know, an economic package or whatever. And, and, and they're arguing that this isn't how we think we should run this or this isn't how we should fix this problem whatever i mean some of the things that they that they say in those arguments i think are stupid mm -hmm. but it's fine i can understand that I, they just they don't want to fix the problem the way that i do or whatever okay fine that's called democracy that's called our political system i mean that's just called life right but when it comes to certain things i mean i just don't understand and i don't care what your excuses i don't care I mean, one of the things, like Patrick and I talk about this sometimes, like one of the things that bothers me in life is I have nothing against like the Wounded Warriors Foundation or the uh, uh, Paralyzed Veterans of America and all that. I, I don't have anything against them, but I'm sorry. We shouldn't need them. We should not need either. They should not oh, exist. Oh, no, I, 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 I not totally exist. agree. I've said over and over and over again. That I don't believe in giving to things like that because the go you're, just, you're you're not having the government live up to their yeah. I, mean, I, I don't. I, yeah. I have. I mean, I, I certainly praise you know Gary Sinise and those guys who do all that, and they get all that done. I mean, but I'm just but saying really that, what they should be doing is she, they should be pouring all the money they get into paying off congressmen, paying off senators, and getting bills yeah. passed. I because, mean, yeah, it's, it's, you know, simply building a house for know, them is, I, I'm know. sorry, but like if you went to Iraq or Afghanistan or Vietnam or whatever, and both of your legs were blown off with an IED, I'm sorry, but the Wounded Warriors Foundation should not have to come to your home and build a fucking wheelchair ramp. They should not. The you know who should do it? The United States of America. Well, I've said this. I'm sorry. But I've said this <laughs> in the past over and over again, even on when I was doing over the air broadcasting. I was saying this, that I just don't believe in giving to these organizations because it's the government that should be doing it, and we're taking the oh, sure. onus off yeah. of them because they're going mean, to go, if, they're going to go, oh, hey, we don't have to fix that. Look, there's the Wounded yeah. Warriors if, organization. If, yeah, if that's the way that it is, you know, I, I, I wouldn't punish the people that need it, you know, but I mean, I, I just don't. I can't believe that we have to have them exist. I mean, John Stewart shouldn't have to get up and give speeches like he's been giving. Yeah. 
you know. I mean, yeah, just, I mean, maybe if, if, if these organizations wanted to do, like, other things, you know, like extra mile type stuff, like parties and, and, and you know, dinners and things, I mean, I guess, but they literally raise money to, to, to provide veterans with, like, basic things. Like I said, like wheelchair ramps or a wheelchair accessible hey, listen, car. I, I, got, I got news for everybody. Things like that. I got news for everybody. And listen, old Alex, he's wise in his old age. Mm-hmm. And that is that if you want to get a lot of things passed, then you should raise money not to, like, uh, do various and sundry things. You should only raise money to have enough money to pay off congressmen and senators because those guys are just on the take. And if they're on the take but we're paying them off, then they're going to do it for us. Yeah, I mean, it, it does It does make me sick. And I'll let everybody else go here now because I know I've started a lot. But, I mean, it just, just makes me sick. And not only the overall situation of that, but, like, we – like, but today and yesterday we have a current event where, you know, there are politicians in Washington literally arguing, just like they do about every fucking goddamn other thing, about providing health care – to veterans who got sick because of something that they had them do. And as a matter of fact, that when they did it, they really didn't have a choice to do it. They were ordered to do it. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. it wasn't like my workplace. But by the way, like, by the I way. don't know. I, I feel yeah. unsafe doing this. You know, at my workplace, they might put their hands up and say, OK, let's sit down and talk about it. And these guys' case, that was not how it worked. Just do whatever needs to be done to take care of them after you've made the mistake. Well, by the way, thank you for your service. <laughs> and it also it also opens the door for these scammers to make money off of those type of, you know, making these type of uh, uh, donation places, and then it gets me wary about them too. I have friends that do car shows out of Kevin too, you know, for wounded warriors and those type of things. But you, know, you see a lot of these other smaller things, and it's like, wow, you know, are these guys scammers or yeah, like J- Josh says, you know, this is basic stuff that should be taken care of. And it's not, you know, it's yeah. just millions and millions and billions of dollars for all these other things. And then they can't even take care of these things that cost a thousand dollars for yeah. guys who sacrifice everything. So. Well, what I don't get, you know, is, is a government that wants to do away with Medicare, you know, I mean, why, what, what, what don't you, don't you want to help people? Is, isn't what a government is is like it's like uh, it's like a potluck dinner. Everybody brings something, and everybody shares from it. You know, I mean, I mean come on. Does it, does it go back to you know like Reagan and these guys saying, "Oh, we want government out of stuff," and and you know people people so worry about government, then they try to get government out, and then they just don't care. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I I honestly can't. I can't understand their objection. I mean, I can't. I, I don't know. I don't know what Mitt Romney or Rob Portman could sit here in this room to me and say that would make me not roll my eyes. I mean, I, I don't give a fuck what, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I mean, just fucking get it done. I mean, I mean, but like, I mean, how long did it take to actually pass legislation that, that legitimately would maybe finally take care of the 9-11 responders. It was like 20 uh, years. Hey, you have to understand. We just did it like two or three years ago. Gosh, you have to understand this. Too busy trying to pass laws so we lose our right to vote. Okay? So, you know. Yeah, I mean, they do get around to, you know, worrying about, you know. Well, no, I just said, I said, I said, I I said this with Trump, but it almost seems (coughs) that it goes for these, these people we're talking about. They must get up every morning and say, "How am I going to fuck the American public over today?" You know what? What kind of horrible, uh, 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 devilish scheme can I come up with to make their life worse? Were you going to say something, Kevin? Yeah, you know, it's, it's both sides. I mean, it's obviously both sides because they do come up with these these bills that are legitimate bills. But both sides fuck with the bills. You know, if it's some what I understand this bill that, that uh, Stuart was, you know, working on, they threw in some pork in there or something with $400 million of some shit that the GOP got pissed off at. And that's why they supposedly didn't, you know, uh, go along with it in the end. But that's, 
that's the problem is that they don't leave the bills alone and they don't just leave clean bills and vote on them and let them go through. They throw shit in there to fuck it all up. And that that's the problem now is that make a bill, vote on it, move on to the next one, make a bill, vote on it, move on to the next one. Everything becomes a political football. And that's the problem. Well, why, why don't we come up with like an anti-pork law or something? Yeah, exactly. Where, where, I mean, you know, if you're going to have a bill, that's it. That's the bill. It's not the can. It. Yeah. Things would probably move a lot faster. I mean, who is going to vote against what they were voting on, the burn pits? Mm -hmm. Yeah. By the way. You know, who's going to vote against that? By the way, somebody. But it's somebody, the other shit that's in there that people get pissed off about and start going, oh, you can't do this. You know. it, it's, that's what happens with almost every bill. It's the other bullshit that they try to shove in there. And that's when everything gets fucked up. Yeah. Boy, she's gotten shorter. <laughs> <laughs> and she's uh, listening to me cuss away. Uh, well, no, go ahead. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, look, he's right. I mean, I, I would be fine with an adjustment like that. I mean, some some rules in the in the two houses. Of Congress, you know, and they uh, they make their own rules. I mean, I I would be fine with you know adjustments like that 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 laid out uh, more restrictions to the amendment processes and things like that to make it difficult, if not nearly impossible, mm -hmm. for for people to attach you know garbage to this kind of stuff because it's getting in the way of legislating, which it's is the job of the legislative problem. branch. You know, it's to legislate. Can you no, imagine so, how, many more, how many more bills would go through bipartisan? Yeah. If there I mean, were, yeah, right. I mean, they, they have to make some sort of adjustment. I mean, because you can't continually have this kind of stuff held up. Well, I mean, I'd say let's make a bill uh, allowing if, 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 where they can't put pork in these bills anymore. But of course, while they're arguing it, they're going to be putting some pork in that bill. So you know, yeah, probably. Or they'd argue that they don't want the pork. They don't want the pork in the bill. You know, they don't want to. Pork and they don't want to restrict pork. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it's just uh, you know, I I mean, but even even in this particular case, some of the people that are arguing over, you know, they think there is unnecessary spending in these bills. I mean, you know, like Kevin said, or really is from both sides. I mean, Rob Portman and you know all these other guys. I mean. <laughs> They have all voted for tremendously fucking stupid spending things in yeah. the past. You know, I mean, just, so fucking well, just also, get over it also this time they're they're and do something to help people. They're they're told how to vote too, you know, mm. by their party. Yeah. You know, right. and the Republican Party likes to be the party of assholes. They just they love mm. relishing in their job as assholes. <sighs> so what was uh, Adrian whispering in your ear, Brian? I don't know. I told her we're in a serious talk to get that, to get out. Did you? Tell her? <laughs> <laughs> she started saying something. I said, I don't care. Because I'm blasting f bombs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Sorry. <laughs> no, no. Hey, no it should upset you know, people. I mean, yeah, well, you know, we it's, can't. It's, who can? Who, who can blame you, uh, 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 Kevin? Because she hides <laughs> behind Daddy, and then occasionally shows her face. So you don't even know she's there. You know. <laughs> I think we I think we talked about that <clears throat> on on other other huge bills that they're trying to pass and they couldn't right like you guys are saying they start adding so much so many things on these bills that there's stuff for everybody to argue about and then they get nothing done. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, but I mean, it, it, look, we live in a very dysfunctional society, and uh, I don't think it's going to get any better. I think it's just going to keep getting worse and worse and worse. And I think there is going to, I won't be around for it, but there is going to be a civil war sometime soon. Uh, you know, it may not be the same kind of traditional war with guns and so on, but it's going to be a war of words and so on in which you're going to find part of the country seceding from the Union, which is just fine with me. Go away. Leave us alone. <laughs> we can get along without you. You know? How would you feel about that, uh, Josh, about us? But certain country, certain states saying we're going to secede from the union. No, we can't. I mean, I like to say I we I, we can't allow that. Um, Why can't you know? we allow it? 
These people well, are, are making I mean, their it's... lives a living hell anyway. You know? Well, this, you know, that's look. People in this country disagree about certain things, and and that's that's fine. We we have to work together and get past that. But I just, you know, uh, secession now is the same as secession was the first time it was tried and all the other times it's been threatened it's the first step to basically to just lawlessness because then anyone can you know negative a law anytime they want you know it's 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 a nullification and secession or uh, a path to where no laws ever mean anything to anyone so you know once once you're in you're in there's no getting out yeah. so but isn't it different now where it's not like we just don't disagree it's like you're wrong so fuck you right I mean, it's, I think it's a lot different than it was before. Yeah, I mean, it's, but it's just, I mean, I, we're not, we're not a, a, at a level amongst that. I mean, listen, you know, in the antebellum period, you know, it's those last few years, especially, I mean, you know, congressmen and senators beat each other up on the, on the House and, and, and Senate floor. There was massive bloodshed. Um, well before the Civil War. I mean, the decade that, you know, that led up to, you know, the, the crisis of the 1850s, if you will. I mean, it was the, the population at large was killing each other in decent numbers. You know, you had the John Brown affair and, you know, bleeding Kansas and, mm -hmm. you know, on and on. I mean, we're not we're not even in the same, you know. No, right but, now, I, we but just I'm have saying a lot that I, I, th I think there will be a. Uh, uh, some states are going to want to secede from the union, and mm -hmm. I'm saying let them go. Goodbye. Don't. Uh, I mean, I, I don't think it'll ever come to that off. because, yeah. first of all, that what what rules everybody is money, and they're never going to give up the federal government's money. Well, but they can create their own federal government, have their own money and their own taxes. You know. Well, uh, I mean, uh, I think you know, in the so case of more. Texas, that would that would be fine, right? Until well, then know, I'm suggesting that some of us states secede, like New York. That's that's all we need is more borders, right? Yeah. We we got borders anyway. I yeah, mean, but the, 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 what's going to enforce those? What's going on in most of the South right now is so different from what's going on at this in this part of the United States. You know, yeah. so that would just be a mess, and I don't think that'll ever happen. Yeah, yeah. It did right. happen though. It's well, it's happening on a you know it's happening on an opinionated level. It's not <clears> happening. <throat> physical level I don't think you know it, it, it's 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 more people just being opinionated and that's what this country is about is being opinionated mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to get to the point where people are shoving guns up each other's throats yeah and that's that's what we're talking about here. Well, I mean you, you know you can talk about you know like January 6th for example but if you just think about it I mean in the late 1850s early 1860s there was a january 6th somewhere in america almost you know weekly <laughs> you know estate houses and 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 county offices you know, when i when i say when i say state though, courts when i say a civil war i'm not talking about a literal you know people pick up guns and start shooting at each other but you can't can have a war you can have it an economic war uh, and people can uh, disappear, you know, from the from the union. Quite frankly, I wish they'd go. I don't. I don't want them around. They're ruining my life. You know, Phil seems to be having a problem here. Oh, there he is. Right, he'll he'll blame you for sure. He'll blame me yeah, or Biden. Brian, you know, Brian's fault. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I, I I like what Josh said. What we really need is the line item veto, and that would probably get a lot of the pork out of uh out of these bills but for one reason or another they they don't want that and well, they don't want anything they don't want especially your your people uh it falls on both sides of the line does it, you it, think it, so i mean it, you know everybody is so against it but they're all right really let me not. just put it this way the, the republicans are bigger assholes than the democrats are would you agree with that assumption no think they all feed at the same trough yeah i agree with phil especially under this new president <coughs> he's not doing much well he's not doing much but that's not because if, if you know he just i don't think he knows how to play the game anymore you know he was he when in the days when he was in the senate there was a certain way the game was played 
the whole game has changed since then. Oh, yeah. And so yeah. a, a guy who was in the Senate, I mean, like, for instance, LBJ knew how to just wrangle those people and get them to do what he wanted them to do. <laughs> and it's because he was in the game pretty much up until he started going with Kennedy. And then he became president within three years. He knew how to handle those people. But Biden's been away from the Senate and been from the, uh, away from Capitol Hill for so long now that I don't think the game is being played the same way and he doesn't know how to play the new game. I think that's his problem. So. In Contra Costa County, when you give the fire department, all the firefighters' families, brand new carpet linoleum, you get a picture with them in front of a fire engine. Really? Is that what he got? Uh, he didn't supply him with free carpet. It's a picture uh, the company that he owns uh, donated some money or something like that. Uh, it's for the work I did with the Stephen Siller Foundation, uh, Tunnel of Towers. They presented me with a piece of the uh, the uh, 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 World Trade Center. Uh, I have a oh, uh, that's really upbeat. He, he got he got a part of the toilet seat from the thirty third floor. Uh, it's, uh, I, I got a piece of the steel. Uh, this guy that's handing it to me, he was at the 9-11, uh, and he was from a Brooklyn... You sound uh, like some old lady. He was at the 9-11. The 9-11. Oh, yeah, he was uh, uh, out of a Brooklyn fire department, and they flew him out to present uh, shadow boxes to the people that participated in, the, uh, in raising money for the Tunnel of Towers. Mm -hmm. So... Well, as we were saying before, you know, it, it, it helps some people, but it doesn't solve the problem. No. Uh, <laughs> at that point, we had already built 51 homes yeah. and turned them over, key, no charge, to uh, veterans that have lost their lives. We paid off. Wait a minute. How do you give a key to a veteran who lost his life? No, lost his le limbs. Oh, okay. You uh, they had to life. lose uh, three or four limbs. Uh, which goes back to the point, why are organizations like that around when the government should be doing it? Because it's needed. Because the government somebody is not, has to, no, somebody has to step up. Not doing it. If somebody right. has to step up. Well, we should, we, yeah, the government should, doesn't should, do it. You should use that time and energy to get the people on Capitol Hill to do your bidding. The government should do our doing. bidding. What do you mean they shouldn't do our I, bidding? I They're not going to do our bidding. It's not that they shouldn't. They will but do our bidding not going if to. instead of taking the money that would have been spent in building those houses, we went and put it in line their pockets and they had to go do something <coughs> about it. You know. it's, a, it's a drop in a bucket. It's $500,000 a house. And uh, so at, at this point... If, I, if you uh, gave $500,000 yeah. to a politician, he'd suck your dick. Okay? Yeah, maybe. You know, yeah. Uh, so, uh, Five hundred thousand dollars to the government is a drop in the bucket. Then buy him a house. Yeah. Well, in mm -hmm. in, two, in 2019, I'll show you what I did. There's a lot of flooding going we on. Was Santa and, Claus for yeah. home for our troops? Yeah, but so that if, Phil, shit. Phil, we don't want to see what you did because when you got to show people what you did, then you did it uh, so you could show people see, what you did. See that one million three one hundred and thirty. Isn't Photoshop great? Did you just hear what I said, Phil? When you, when, you have, is, when you have to show us a picture of what you did, then uh, what you did you weren't doing because uh, for any other reason than you wanted a picture to be able to show people what you did. Not uh, necessarily, <laughs> you know, but what it shows is, is that uh, companies get behind people that need and our veterans and firefighters uh, and, and police officers, mm -hmm. first responders uh, needed our help and continue to need our help. And, uh, we still we still do it with uh, so the point the point is the point, Phil, is, the point is that we don't we we don't deny that you do that the point is that the government should be doing it and not you exactly that's the point see i don't believe that the government should do anything uh, why uh, why because why? their why? responsibility why? hold on a second hold on a second phil why the hell they, do you pay taxes they, they go to they go to work Cold for road. the government they go to work for the government. They put their life on the line for the government. They burn pit for the government. They inhale shit for the government. And then they come home and they're supposed to go on their own? 
Well, now, because the government does uh, help them to rehab, but the problem is their caregivers are under such pressure uh, that they have to be there all the time. So by giving them a home that's a smart home that allows them to be no, no, more no, no, independent. No, 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 you're going off again. You're going off track It allows them to be yeah, more you're going, independent. You're, 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 off track again. You're, not, you're not listening. Why doesn't the government take care of their own? Simple hey, question. Do, why, do, but this is, why, why do they have to raise money to put ramps in veterans' homes when they need to have to come Why back? should you this do... This is above why, and beyond. Phil, Phil why, why should uh, oh, you do... No. Why should you do uh, what the government should be doing? Why should you take the onus off of them and the responsibility off of them for dealing with a situation like this? You take a human being. You send them to another country. You put them, use them as cannon fodder. You bring them back wounded. And then you say, hey, thank you for your service. And now guys like you have to raise a million bucks to well, build a couple of and houses. It's no, it's, we're, it's, not, we're not putting we're not, you down for it, Phil. No. It's just the fact that the, the question is, is why do people like you and me, I worked for, home for, for Homes for Our Troops. I did that too. But why should we have to do it when our government should be doing it? By the way, let, well, me, mention, let, me, mention, let me just mention, Kevin, that I didn't know you did that because you never mentioned it. Phil is always mentioning what he did. Because I, that's, that's how we no, raise money no, no, awareness. You, if, if the best kind of giving is what you, the giving you do silently. I'll give you an yeah, example. Like, I'll give you an example. <laughs> Do you know who gave, and he doesn't like people to know about it, gave a ton of money to Firehouse in, in his neighborhood in New York City? I mean, a couple of million dollars worth to the Firehouse because they had a lot of people they lost in 9-11? David mm -hmm. Letterman. He told them, if anybody ever says that I gave you guys money, I'm never going to give you another penny again. Mm -hmm. Okay? And Phil... It, you, it, the fact that you're sitting there and you're showing the check and you're making a big deal, Kevin, we never heard that he did what he did. And he probably only mentioned it now as a now, matter of course. Let, yes, let, Alan, let me just Alan, say, Alan, Alan. Yeah, mm -hmm. so so I, 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 I thank Kevin for doing that and I thank Phil for doing that. And I, and I understand what you're saying. Phil doesn't need to put up all the pictures to gloat. But I think Phil did it for the right reasons and I think Kevin did it for the right reasons. Because our fucking government won't do it, so other organizations step in and help people out. But don't you understand that by doing that, we take the responsibility off the government to have to do it? Correct. I Phil agree doesn't understand you. that. Phil doesn't understand that. You have to. You you're have only to. seeing. You're only seeing a portion of the picture. The government is rehabbing these people. They're paying for multiple operations and so forth. What what this foundation does no. is by giving houses Tell to these Tell us men exactly what they're women. doing. Give us an example of what they're doing. They're building smart houses so that the... Not uh, who, who, who's, who's building so, smart so, houses? So, well, the government pays for operations and, and so forth. And they should continue by f putting them in the houses that they need. Right. Why, are they, houses, why are they... They sew them up and they send them out. These houses are more for the family to allow the veteran to, uh, to be We know what they're for, Phil. You don't have to give us a lecture on it. We know what they're for. I'm, we're I'm just saying aware, that... The, the point that we're trying to make, Phil, and, that, and you, you're making perfectly good points. The point is no, he's not. that the government <laughs> should be doing what Mr. Siller is doing and what HOFOT is doing. And what all these other organizations are doing, they're taking the burden off the government what they should be doing. Well, you know, it's in years past mm -hmm. when a person's I mean, barn is burned that, down, is that out of, is that the, community, the community helped them raise another one. And uh, it, war. <laughs> well, it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> these it people are the in need. What the government asked them to do. You don't, you don't see me posting stuff up here on Wounded Warrior, but every month, they take a, 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 out of my credit card. They take a certain amount of money that I donate, but I don't need to broadcast it and put all these pictures all over the place. Yeah, well, look at me. I did look it. At, look at my Not big. For look, look at, at me. Look at my big but for check. look at this. Look at my big check. You can't cash because it's too big. <laughs> Believe me, they cashed it. <laughs> Not that check. Well, the the money. The money. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. That was part okay. of the promo. So, so Phil, so Phil, on their website right here, Wounded Warriors Project is committed to helping those living with PTSD. Right. 
Well, so why, 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 why do they need to help them with this? You're saying that they do all this, all this rehab for people. Why are they spending any money on that? Because we're human beings and we want to do better for our fellow man. Well, if, then, if, then if when, we when are you going to tell your goddamn Republican congressmen and senators to care about their common man? If well, they, they do. That, well, they, they don't. don't. They don't care if they dealt with it, wounded warriors would have nobody to help with living with PTSD. Yeah, if they were to, if they were helping, yeah, you wouldn't have to have a Stephen Stiller Foundation. Why did this bill help. not pass today? And here's the other one: help veterans suffering from toxic exposure. Why are they having to help them with that? Yeah, the bill didn't pass today. They didn't help them there. Oh. What pork did they tag on to that, Josh? Probably. Uh, Who cares is, what pork they tagged on well, to? Well, you know, you can't necessarily it pass done, something. Bill. Yeah. They all agreed to it, but, you know. Was they, this the $700 billion that. Uh, it was $400 million or something. It wasn't that bad. No. In fact, I heard the amount. I heard the amount, and I went, is that going to get us anything? You know, it started out at three trillion or something, or three billion, and then it got down to about four hundred million. And I'm thinking, is that going to get us what we need? And that was just a bunch of Republicans saying they wanted to say no because they could say no. Is that the one that Mansion uh, changed his his uh, idea on to allow it to pass? I believe so. Yes. So I if it didn't it pass, pass, who voted against it? The I Republicans. Think, wait a minute. Uh, other wait, than the the, the Republicans wait, don't wait, have wait, a majority. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. It wasn't a mansion thing that he changed his vote on uh, on the climate change. Yes, uh, yeah. I, I believe I can't remember which one. Okay, this was wasn't the mansion was vote then. No, no, I don't think so. No, this was just it was a bipartisan agreement until today, I believe. Mm. And then they decided we aren't being assholes enough, and they exactly they had, so, they had to get their 50... asshole cred going. You know, well, there, there's they, a majority around and in, spit on the veterans. There's a majority in the in the House and Senate of Democrats. Why couldn't this pass? Was it uh, the, the filibuster in the Senate, or was it uh, the House that uh, didn't pass it? Senate, the Senate. So they needed sixty mm -hmm. votes. I believe so. Yeah, can't say for sure, but that's where it was. Look, this country. You know, we pay a lot of taxes every year. And, yeah. Some of us yes. uh, pay a lot of taxes. I know I did over the years. And when you give your money to the government in taxes, you're hoping that you're going to get something back for it. You deserve to get something back for it. You owe it to me. I gave you some money, some of my money, to take care of stuff. Okay? Now you're supposed to take care of the stuff. And when you don't okay. take care of the stuff, then you're, then you're stealing my money. And I honestly believe that this it, it really what's happening now is involuntary theft of our money every year when they take taxes because if we don't pay taxes we go to jail okay so i mean isn't that a kind of robbery of sorts of holding us up and then not giving us anything for it yes uh, kevin Someone on the chat said the pork was money to rural health centers to take care of veterans who are not near major cities where VA services are available. That was the pork? Else, that was the pork, and the GOP said no. Didn't hmm. Trump say that if you needed medical care as a veteran, uh, they would give you a credit card and you'd go to whoever and wherever you wanted, that you weren't restricted? Yeah, to but that was, that was several it's years ago. A friend of mine actually did that. Uh, it, it, does it still exist? That, that I don't particular know. program. He still goes. He lives up in Alaska now, and he still goes to the doctor. So I imagine so. So why do they need that other program? There if they are this some one? other places that doesn't have that. I don't know. They have doctors. They give them a credit card and say, "Go get your." Well, it's not not that okay. easy. Apparently, I, I know he has issues with it sometimes. Mm. But if that was the pork, and I can't verify that, but that's what someone Scott. Kaprowski on the uh, chat said that, and yeah. I can't verify it. But well, that's not normally what sounds I would, about right. That's not normally what I would call pork. I wouldn't call that pork. I'd call that just another more help for the vets. Hmm. Mm. But it's four hundred million dollars. We wouldn't want that to happen. Yeah. 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 For I'm all we uh, for all we owe to the vets, four hundred million is a drop in the bucket. Thank you for your service. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, Brian. No, I'm just Brian. What were you going to say? No, I just said I'm ready to retire so I can move somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wish oh. I wish I were younger, and I'd do exactly the same thing. Yeah, you know. Really, I, I like that picture. All the service members have their back to to Don. Yeah. By the Donald way, can I ask Trump. you, Phil, how how many years did you serve? Twenty one. No, how many years did you serve? Twenty one. Twenty one. I served my community for twenty one years. No, 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 no. no. How much? How, sir, I wore a gun. Never I been, took an oath. Never been in the military. And you got. I, and I you, served twenty one years and you got, to the community. And you got <laughs> and you got free donuts mm. for your service. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Phil, I didn't even get that. And Phil, if you, if you got your leg blown off, do you think they would take care of you? Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> but should they? City of Richmond. They? But should they, Phil? But should they? Yeah. The city of Richmond was would disavow any knowledge. Hi. See, always a joke. They push him over. To push him over. It's true. They always say a joke. I'm serious. What's that? Uh, if my leg got blown Could off, there be an expectation that they would, they would take care of you. If you no, they wouldn't take care of me. They have. I had workers' compensation insurance, and they would have given me a medical treatment, and maybe retrained me, but uh, nobody would have bought me a house. Yeah, John well, Redshaw says that. that John Stewart explained it was not a slush fund. It's no pork there. That's uh, hmm. that's good, solid uh, stuff they wanted to do extra. But you know, so hello, Tony. Yeah, yeah I was enjoying the conversation. I was listening to it. Finally, I know. Yeah. Yeah, I was. I heard the John Stewart thing uh, this afternoon mm. too. What'd you think? I like him, so you know, I like it. I think he kind of. Would you vote for him? him? Yeah, I would vote for John Stewart. I definitely would. I don't think he wants to run, but you know. I mean, I always liked him when he was on TV. So I always, I, that, I think he's. That's nice not a reason to want to vote for him. No, but I mean, he seems that's genuine true. what he does, like outside the show, though. You know, he seems like he really cares. I mean, oh, he, but he, but he's he's been unrelenting yeah. in his pursuit of help for. The nine eleven people. I mean, the, I have a, my cousin Kevin's a fireman, so he's he's got bladder cancer, so they're trying to tie it into the nine eleven fund. He's having, sure, was he down like there? Was, was he down there? Yeah, he's down there. At the okay, company. well then he probably that's he loves it. John Stewart. Yeah, I mean he's. I mean he could have bladder cancer because people just get bladder cancer. But yeah, but he's but like my. Is he suspicious. a cigarette smoker, yeah. Tony? No, he doesn't smoke or nothing, Kevin. Oh, okay, well. Yeah, he's he's recovering, but. Uh, hey, but, Alan. How much do you give every month to the wounded warriors? What does that matter? Yeah, really, I'm just curious. He looks what that that, I mean, text him. Text him. No, you know, he, mm. he, meant, he said that his credit card gets charged I, every month. I don't, think, I don't think that he should have to answer that question because he didn't I mean, even want it. He, he let it slip that he even gave that money. You know? I, oh, he doesn't let it slip. In. <laughs> no, he let it slip, Phil. Unlike you, who shows a picture of the giant check you guys are in. I mean, yeah, I mean, you the know, check is very big. subtle, and, Phil. Very. You know, subtle. it's you're important such, you're such to a get. Good, you're such a good guy, Phil. It's God. important to get the word out. You know. It's a cause that I believe in, <laughs> right. and uh, there's you've got thirty or forty <laughs> listeners, <laughs> and. Uh, you know, they should know about the Tunnel of Towers, Stephen Siller Tunnel of Towers. Well, there are a lot of, I mean, they should also know there are a lot of other organizations that mm -hmm. also do similar things that don't get the same kind of publicity and could probably use your help. Almost 100% of humanity. the money goes to the cause. Habitat for Humanity. Habitat for Humanity. My, my mom gave the St. Jude's. I still, she saved the letters. Like the of, you know, speaking of Habitat for Humanity, Vernon does that. And speaking of Vernon, he lives in Kentucky. Does anybody know if he's okay with all the floods that are going on? Uh, you know, I, he probably is okay. I would imagine. I don't have his contact. You know, but every time, every time I used to, there used to be a flood somewhere near where I was, or within the uh, two hundred miles of where I was, people would always get a hold of me and go, "Are you okay?" You know, I go, Earth "I know, I don't live in Lake Tahoe. There's no forest fire here in my neighborhood." You know, earthquakes the same thing. There's some small earthquake and it gets advertised. Yeah, in Southern California, and everybody asked me, yeah. "Is you are you okay? You okay?" You on Facebook, oh no, my house is uh, needing repair. Could you send me some money? On, on <laughs> Facebook, a lot please. of people, a lot of people can post when they're okay. You know, if there's a disaster, they they can post and you know let people yeah. know okay. that they're safe. Yeah. So are you going to come to my rescue, Phil? Because uh, you know, I I was a veteran. I am a veteran. 
Yeah, I, I'll I'll send you a microphone. I, I no, I, no, I was I was you know I was around for the Vietnam War. Yeah, I served during the Vietnam War. Yes, you did. Yeah, and uh, your your service was greatly appreciated. And I'm sure we would have built a house for you, but you didn't well, ask. Well, actually, I did something pretty valuable. To yeah. tell you the truth. You were wanted by the Chinese, weren't you? Or the Vietnamese? There was a price ooh, on my ooh. head in China, yeah. Yeah, you had a price. Yeah, about 50 $7. cents. No, it was thirty nine ninety five on sale from fifty nine ninety nine. Yeah, yeah. It, everything's $95. Yeah. No, they actually, anybody who was on Armed Forces Radio, they had on a list as being a propagandist. Oh, really? And that we were, uh, we were uh, considered to be, uh, you know, whatever that is, you know. Yeah. Uh, so I, you know, I, I was I was all, that, and I was on Nixon's enemies list too. The Nixon list, I like Alex. You bet you couldn't get a copy. Of, like, I would look, was there an actual copy of his list? Well, there was a, there were two lists. There was a list of a thousand of people who he just an wanted actual, to get thrown in jail. Existed. Yeah, and then there were twelve thousand, twelve thousand, or yeah, twelve thousand of us uh, who were listed as to be uh, audited by the IRS. Uh, you know, was, was it because form. of your participation with Abby Hoffman or well, association? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, In fact, I had an FBI file. And my FBI file, supposedly, I've never gone and gotten it, said well, that I was known to consort with yeah. radicals, with political what, What's radicals. it called when you request the documents and they'll, they'll send it to yeah, you? I forget uh, that. Yeah, it's called uh, transparency. Document requests. No, no. There's actually a, a, a thing that after 21 years of service to the community, you don't know what it's called. Well, it's a federal thing. It's the documents. Uh, you know, if uh, yeah. you can request uh, Freedom of Information uh, Act. Freedom of Information That's it. Act. Freedom of Information Act. Yeah, I just never got it. I was too lazy. I can probably still get it if I want it. Is it is it simple to request something like I that? I don't know. I really don't Act? know. You know, Josh would probably know that. I'm entitled to it. Let me put it that yeah. way. Now, whether I have to jump through hoops to get it is another question altogether. They they send it redacted. <laughs> you know. Well, I I think I get most of it now. I don't think that there's too much in there. They have to redact. You know, but uh, no, they. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, there was a uh, what's it? Who was it that was on the run from the law? Bernadette Dorn. Oh, I was on the run from the law, and I was uh, staying with my friend Stu Albert up at his place up in upstate New York. And uh, while I was napping one day, she dropped by while she was on the run from the law. <laughs> and uh, supposedly there were FBI agents in the woods watching with high-powered binoculars, and I'm in that description of what went on. Uh, uh, oh. uh, who... Uh, who shot Ford? That wasn't Dorn, right? Uh, Squeaky no, from. No, Squeaky no, from. I Charles Manson, crazy lady. Yeah. Yeah. Squeaky from. Yeah. She, uh, no, she tried think, to shoot him. She didn't did get she him. Did she get shoot him, Alex, or no? No. She I think was she that in New York? Starter pistol. Huh? That, that happened in California, I think. San right. Francisco. Uh, there, well, there yeah. were two situations. Was it San Francisco or Sacramento? One was San one was Bernard, one, one was uh, Squeaky From. The other one who went after uh, Ford was a woman, and I'm trying to remember her name now. And she shot at him, uh, or came dead. after him with a gun. Now, you know, but, but, Bernadette Dorn was that uh, Chelsea Bodine's mother? No. Oh, who was his mother? Who's Chelsea Bodine? He was the uh, DA like a in San Francisco. It sounds like that a was... character on the Beverly No, no, Hillbilly. he was the he DA in San Francisco that was just uh, recalled, and he was the son of two. Oh, of yes, the... he was the son of Bern. I think maybe Bernadine Dorn. Yeah, and, that's that's uh, what I thought. And the guy up in uh, Buffalo, uh, what's his name? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, they gave uh, they gave. Um, Obama a Medal bad of time. No, Obama a bad time about knowing. Oh uh, yeah, what was his name uh, again? Uh, God, I Bill Ayers. Bill Ayers. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought Bill Ayers brought up Chelsea Bordine, Bordine, but that he was the son of 
Bernadette Dorn and one other person that was in jail. And oh, I thought okay. Bill Ayers was his surrogate father. I think it was his step, yeah, his stepfather. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, I saw Bernadine Dorn and Bill Ayers uh, a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. I went to a, uh, a um, what do you call it, uh, a get together to celebrate uh, Stu Albert's life when he died. And they were there. Celebration and, of life. Yeah, and they got up and they gave some speeches. And boy, I thought, you know, these people are just a bunch of old, I, I hate being here because these are a bunch of old radicals trying to live the heyday, right? And these people got up and gave speeches, and I just went, man, they still got it. They still wow. believe it. They're still doing it, you know. So um, I was, uh, I, and it was good to be in their presence, you know. They got a lot of practice. What do you mean they got a lot of practice? Well, making the speech. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. I think uh, Bernadine Dorm was in that house. I think she fled the house that. Uh, the SLA. That, no, the, the house up, burned. Blew up on a. No, it wasn't the SLA, Phil. Boy, you get everything the wrong. City, right? The yeah. SLA that, was. It, it was the Weather Underground. The weather Underground. Under Dustin Hoffman was in, wasn't that what you said that time? SLA, that's funny. Yeah, I, I, I get confused with the Weather Underground. It's the guy, the house next to D Dustin Hoffman's. Yeah, it blew up. <clears throat> yeah. But she escaped it, so, you yeah. know. But, uh, you yeah, know, those, those, were the, those were fun times. That'll bring the value down of those houses in the neighborhood. I, I, I was remembering the, I remember, remembering the other day to Marjorie, yeah. uh, the time that I, and I wondered whether it really was true. I got a call from somebody who said, do you want to interview uh, Patty Hearst on the run? Wow. Wow. And I said, yes, I would love to. He says, well, sure. uh, she's here in, she's good. She's in New Jersey. I won't say where. And uh, yeah. we'll give you the interview, but we want a thousand dollars. And I said I can't, I, I can't do that. I said I don't pay for interviews. Okay, she wants to give an interview. Fine, I'm, you know, uh, I'm sympathetic to her cause and so on and so forth. Uh, mm. You know, but I, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pay her any money. And the station wouldn't, if I did it, the station would be very mad if I did. You know. Uh, and so that was that. Well, I often wonder whether that was a legitimate call or not. I and then I watched she a comes from such a poor family. Will you let me finish my story, please? <laughs> About like, time you yelled at somebody else. <laughs> Jeez, I, I'm trying to tell a story, and then I just bing. But uh, no, I said uh, I was watching a documentary on Patty Hearst that they did a few years ago on CNN. Sure enough, at that specific time, she was in New Jersey. Ooh, she lived in New Jersey for about a year. You don't think somebody was trying to con you out of a thousand bucks and there was no. really no interview? Well, no, you know. he said she was in New Jersey. I, I understand that, that he might have had some information. Well, I, but often, your... I often wondered about that until yeah. I found out she was in New Jersey at that time and the right. guy wasn't lying to me. You know, so. She so, might have been right over the bridge. Yeah, so, you know, it's, it's that. Uh, Why do you keep looking at the time? There's no Jack show. Well, I know. I just have it. Yeah, it's Friday night. You might as well stay on an extra half hour. <laughs> no, we tried that, but Phil was on that night too. Remember? Oh yeah. What's yeah. that? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, yeah. I don't know. He's been uh, pretty tame tonight. Hmm. But Phil has been pretty tame tonight. Alex said the other day uh, under his breath, "I wish this was like the Monday show." So I'm just trying to give him what he wants. You hardly come to the quality of the Monday show. No, well, I, hey, it, it's I, I was pushing in that direction. Brian and Jeff are very typical of people, and, and even, even Kevin. He's called that show a couple of times. Uh, I'm not trying to do your Monday show. I have no time for it. But, you know, the, the thing is, we, we you know, don't it's right like in the middle of my Monday work day. Show. So even if you had time for it, we uh, wouldn't make time for it. I, I, could, I could wear a mask. You They're wouldn't blocked. know it was me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. I'll wear my Bubba teeth. Your Bubba you teeth. You sound just like Tony. You and Tony yeah. sound the same. I'll use Tony's same, background. Same, same accent. It's grand and it's still crooked. You son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, hey, fun. No. it was fun tonight. Mm. Uh, I like uh, got it off to a good start with Josh. Thank you, Josh. Uh, 
yeah. uh, telling us what's up. And uh, then, uh, then when Jeff, of course, has been just the light of the party tonight. That's right. Well, I was thinking about Vietnam. Uh, yeah. All this Vietnam. Time. Vietnam. In the service, Jeff. Well, did you serve? <laughs> did you serve? Uh, I did in a certain way. I worked on a, the atomic bomb. Oh, cool. you worked on the atomic bomb. Is the that the project? is that the Teller Ed, Edward Teller? Uh, it's uh, not the Manhattan Project, Phil. No, but in in uh, L- Lawrence Livermore Lab, uh, worked. Was that the hydrogen or the atomic? That uh, that Ed, Edward Teller. Stop. Huh? No, I, I worked on a on a uh, airplane. That I, had I, I worked on several a, atomic bombs. I'd like to say I worked on a bomb. This show. Uh, anyway, <laughs> hey, you Jeff, created it, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alex. Well, you're welcome. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Josh. We really appreciate it, Alan. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. And thank you, Kevin. And thank you, Phil. Thank you, Alex. And and thank you, uh, uh, Tony. Uh, very nice to hear from you tonight. Yes, there he is. Everybody, give a, a big uh, wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you and then we will fade to me let me see here oh yes here comes my camera there we are hello everybody uh that's it for tonight uh jack is not on tonight as you know because he's in the hospital but he he's 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 still in one piece okay so don't uh, uh, he's he sounded great when i talked to him today didn't sound like anybody that should be in the hospital but anyway uh, stick around for him uh, I'll see you again on Monday with the uh, uh, the pop-up show uh, on Facebook at 4 o'clock on Monday. And then uh, next week, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, you know, <laughs> if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.